Hello, hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, I wanted to take some time to uh, look back on this week's past sermon, uh, particularly the account of Jesus cleansing the man with leprosy from Luke 5, uh, beginning in verse 12. Uh, in this account, I'm always drawn to the fact that Jesus touched a man with leprosy before he healed him. Um, you know, up until this point, this man's whole world has been isolation, something that we can kind of identify with uh, in today's terms. Um, but, you know, he was, he, he was left alone. He was isolated. He, nobody touched him. Uh, if he did go out in public, he had to shout out unclean so that people knew to beware and wouldn't accidentally bump or rub up against him. People didn't enter his mess because if they did, it would mean that they would become unclean. I think about the times with my own children when they would have those big diaper blowouts and you pick them up and you carry them at arm's length until you can get them to the bathroom where you can then clean them up. I, I didn't want the mess on me, <laughs> right? And, and that's my flesh. You know, I don't want other people's messes all over me. Yet, that's not Jesus' posture here. He touches the man. And just when you think, okay, great, now, Jesus, you're going to be unclean, and, and everything that comes along with that, quite the opposite happens. Jesus' cleanliness is transferred to the man, making him clean. That authority Jesus has as God has cleansed the man of his leprosy. Encountering Jesus changed his life. How often do we as Christians either avoid people's messes or avoid letting others into our mess? We don't touch people because we're afraid of how their mess might rub off on us. We're uh, afraid of a time commitment or the emotional or spiritual or possibly even financial impact that it will make on our own lives. And vice versa, we don't think that our mess is worth bothering others over. So we keep it hidden and we keep it to ourselves. And we live, continue to live in that mess. And perhaps we become numb to the authority of Jesus. Right? We don't do anything about it because we've become numb to the authority of Jesus. We read about it in the Bible. We hear sermons about it. And then we turn around and we head out to the coffee shop or we turn on the next big game and we go about life. We forget how encountering Jesus changes lives. The spirit that Jesus had is the same spirit living in us as Christians. God's spirit allows us to touch lives, to enter into messes, and to offer cleansing through Jesus. We offer an encounter with Jesus. And after all, that's what God did for us. Paul writes this in Philippians 2, verse 6 through 8, speaking of Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. God sent Jesus to enter into our mess, humanity's mess, so that when we encounter him, he can change our lives. I leave you with these two challenges. Is there a mess in your own life you need to let Jesus touch through means of other believers? Or is the Spirit leading you to be willing to enter into someone else's mess so that they might find an encounter with Jesus and know his touch. I pray that you have a great rest of your week and that you continue to love God and love others.